Our next speaker is uh, Tim Cannon. Uh, Tim founded uh, Grindhouse, not sure what that is. He has a magnet implant, maybe he'll show us where it is. And he's into brevity. His resume, his bio is the shortest of all the speakers, so I can't tell you anything more. But please welcome Tim. Hello, hello, hello. Here we go. All right. Where's my jetpack? Where's my house on the moon? Where's my flying car? Where are the automated farms that are going to feed the poor and the hungry? Where's the empowering future that we were promised? probably buried in marketing research and liability documentation. I mean, we've had progress of a sort. We have supercomputers in our pockets. And they can beam advertising information directly into your brain at the speed of light. But that's not the progress that we expected, I think. I think we wanted a jetpack. Something that could take us one person empowered, point A to point B, through technology. My name's Tim Cannon, and I'm an amateur. I have a two-year tech school degree. I have no formal training in how to build medical devices whatsoever. However, in my spare time, I go into my basement, and I build cybernetics. In my spare time, I try to make humans better. I try to improve biology. That's the world we live in. I don't need to be patient anymore. I don't need to wait for industry and academics to deliver me the future. I can get it myself, and I prefer to. In 2011, around April, I became aware of a person named Left Anonym, and she was doing a talk called Practical Cybernetics for the Masses where she informed me that if I implant a magnet in my finger that's coated with something safe, I'll be able to feel electromagnetic fields. People can't feel electromagnetic fields. This is a sixth sense. This is a magic power. I can't believe other people haven't heard of this. It's a small one for sure, but it's profound. It's changed the way I look at things. I also became aware, after getting my magnet implant, that there were groups of people who were talking about improving the human condition through technology. These people were called transhumanists, and I'd never heard anything about this. So I went about to start looking through the forums and talking to the people that I could find on the, on the internet, and what I found was there was nobody like me. There were no hackers. There were no people who just wanted to pick up and build. Learn what you had to on the fly. Let's get it done. Let's move. No, no. In, in this community, it seemed most people were waiting. Let's wait on industry. Let's wait on the professionals. Let's wait for the people who are looking to do this for a profit will deliver it to us. I'm sure they'll deliver it with us in mind. Where were the lay people in all of this? It seemed that the belief was that you needed three degrees and a million dollars to improve the human being. I just thought that was dead wrong. So me and my friend Sean decided, let's get to work. So we went to my basement and we started building interfaces for my magnet implant. We started patching distance sensors in so that I could actually feel how distant something was through an electronic device temperature sensors so that I could have something I could close my eyes and hold it up to this. I could feel how hot this was through a different port. I had a digital interface. It was
was around that time when I started to publish some of this work and started to show people what I was working on that I became aware that there was a movement that I was looking for called the Grinders. And this is kind of an affectionate nickname for them. These are the kinds of cyberpunks that I was looking for. The DIY brave people that didn't care. They would put an RFID capsule into their, into their hand. They would put a magnet into their finger. They would hack bacteria, mix it in some yogurt, and damned if they wouldn't eat it. They were willing to experiment. They were brave. They made science exciting. But still, there were no organized projects. It was all people just kind of doing their own thing because it seemed inappropriate to ask somebody to take that kind of risk. Everybody taking that risk felt it was inappropriate to ask other people taking that risk to take that risk with them. We felt that was also silly. So around November of 2011, we had a meeting and said, what can we do to bring about the cyborg future that we want to see? What can we do to make the future that we imagine a possibility? We all had kind of a idea in mind that had come from the talk, Practical Cybernetics for the Masses, this device called Southpaw. But it was highly complicated and the feature set was just too big and we were too much, we were too amateur, we were too novice. We had no idea what we were doing. So we said, what's the minimum feature set for us to consider ourselves cyborgs? What's the minimum cyborg requirements? What are the specs? So we said, the device must be, we should build a device. It should be completely self-contained. It should read and react to some sort of biological data. It should have access to the internet so that it can take that data and do something with it. And it should have, it should be visible to the naked eye. There should be something that displays on the sur surface of your skin. This is what we decided would be the minimum things for the cyborg, except the lights on the surface of the skin, which we just thought look, would look cool. Um, uh, so we came up with a plan and came up with a design and came up with some ideas of how we could accomplish this and started to show it around to other people with the kind of credentials and the scientific background to kind of give us the critiques we need. And instead of getting the thing that you might expect, oh, you're off here, you know, these are technical people. Oh, you're off here, oh, your source code's off. Let me take a look at the electrical diagram. No, it was, you're unqualified, you're an idiot, you're gonna hurt yourself, you, you guys need millions of dollars, you need a better lab, you can't do this, you have no idea what you're doing. No, they were right on the last part. We had no idea what we were doing. We had no idea how to do clinical research. How do you do materials toxicity testing? I'm a software developer. I don't know anything about this stuff. So what do you need? You need more people. That's exactly what we did. We set out to try to get more people, more qualified people. We needed more skills. But you have a problem there. How do you get highly skilled and competent people to work for free on a crazy idea? <laughs> well, it turns out it's not that hard to sell. Um, turns out that qualified people love to use their skills for meaningful projects. Especially if you tell them, I'm going to give you a problem, I want you to solve it your way on your time schedule using your skills because you're awesome. <laughs> Guess what? People love that. So we actually started to get some qualified people. They started to build some robust tests. We got some electrical engineers. They built some good circuits. We started to improve this process and piece by piece, these lay people started to build something that was actually real. People not waiting for their future to be delivered to them, building their own damn jetpack. So where we are today is that in my hand, I have my first self-made cybernetic implant. We built this all on our own. In a week, I'm going to be sending this off to a company that specializes in bioproofing. It's going to be returned to my developers where it will be rigorously tested 
and presuming that everything goes according to plan, which it always does without a hitch every time, Murphy <laughs> has no law, um, then if it passes its test, it's going to be implanted in my arm. And I'm going to be a DIY cyborg. This was the future that I imagined. And this was the future that I went out and got. So don't let anybody tell you that you are unqualified to participate in a future that you can imagine. Because it's your ability to imagine it and your tenacity and your passion that gives you the ability to accomplish it and makes you qualified. Thank you.